Robot finger with living skin, created by Japanese scientists, points to a new future. Today, shaking hands with a robot feels exactly the same as holding a cold piece of metal. But in the future, it might not differ all that much from shaking hands with a person. Researchers in Japan claim to have grafted living human skin onto a robotic finger as the first step toward making this a reality. How would you feel shaking a robot's hand and it's actually like a human's hand? Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we will be discussing a robot finger created with living skin. Isn't it crazy? Let's dive into the details. With the aid of a collagen bandage, the lab-grown layer, which is made of actual human skin cells, can mend itself after being wounded. The covering is water-resistant and wrinkles whenever the robot's finger curls. Just like the genuine thing. The research, according to the University of Tokyo engineer Shoji Takeuchi, is a first step toward creating robots that resemble humans. The study's principal investigator, Professor Takeuchi, stated, Our goal is to produce robots that really are truly human-like. We believe that covering it with the same substance as a human being's living cells is the only way to attain an appearance that may be mistaken for a human being. Why would we need robots that resemble humans? Roboticists have a key objective of creating robots that are as human-like as possible, which may seem like something out of a dismal sci-fi movie. According to Nicole Robinson, a Monash University expert in robot-human interaction, giving robots human characteristics could not only make them more relatable, but also enable them to do tasks more securely and effectively. Dr. Robinson stated that it's crucial that robots are able to properly engage with a human-built world. A robot with a hand that resembles a human, for instance, would be able to better pick up an item made for people, like a coffee cup, according to Dr. Robinson. Making robots safer working with them is a further objective. If the robot bumps into the individual, it is less likely to hurt them, according to Dr. Robinson. But for roboticists, creating lifelike skin for robots has proven to be a huge difficulty. While flexible and sturdy enough to support a robot's motions, Sheets like silicone are unable to mend themselves after tearing. Additionally, it is challenging to make a flat silicon sheet fit a robot's angular shape like a glove. Furthermore, Professor Takeuchi added, silicone skin doesn't look all that realistic up close. He declared, you must have the fingers of an artisan who really can cut or tailor with skill. The rubber coverings that are frequently used today could appear authentic up close or in photographs or movies but they are actually fake. Generating human skin in a lab. Professor Takeuchi and his team used dermal fibroblasts and collagen, two essential elements of the dermis, the middle layer of our skin, to generate human-like skin from scratch. Skin's structure and stretchiness are attributed to the protein collagen and dermal fibroblasts are involved in wound healing. The liquid shrank and wrapped up around the robotic finger-like cling wrap generating a dermis-like layer. When the team submerged it in a solution made up of these two ingredients, the skin's ability to adapt so perfectly to the surface of the robot startled researchers. According to Professor Takeuchi, after that, the scientists covered the finger in keratinocytes, which make up 90% of the epidermal, the outermost moisture layer of our skin. The team discovered the entire skin-like layer was elastic enough just to expand and wrinkled as the robotics finger moved when they put it to the test. Stretching and curling were both possible with the skin's strength and flexibility. The researchers went a step farther and investigated how the coating might repel water to test if the finger could flick aside a tiny polystyrene foam bead. The researchers placed the bead in front of the finger. Robots with wet coating generally have trouble handing polystyrene beads because they frequently become attached to the surface. However, in this instance, the finger was able to flick the bead away successfully, demonstrating that its outer skin could repel water much like ours. Another robotic finger without an epidermis on top but with a dermis-like layer was utilized by the team as a comparison. Despite the finger's best efforts, the annoying bead eventually became trapped on the tip after many tries to flick it. The finger's epidermal layer provided it the ability to repel water, which allowed it to brush the bead away. The real test, however, was determining whether the skin-like layer was capable of self-healing. The team sliced a small hole with a medical scalpel over the robot's middle joint, and then covered it with a collagen dressing, which is a standard method for healing actual wounds. 
The collagen bandage had transformed into the skin after a week of soaking in a culture dish and held up after many joint movements. The most intriguing aspect of the research, according to Juxi Leitner, a roboticist at Monash University, was its possible applications in fields other than robotics, such as the creation of lifelike prosthetic limbs and the care of burn victims. Dr. Leitner, who was not associated with the work, stated that it was a crucial step in demonstrating what was possible. Dr. Leitner is skeptical that the skin-like coating would endure the test of time. However, as it lacks several of the features of human skin, such as blood vessels and the hypodermis, the lowest layer of the skin, if it doesn't have something that can give it a way of surviving, it won't live very long right now, according to Dr. Leitner. The research team led by Professor Takeuchi has already begun to develop methods for incorporating circulatory systems into robot skin. The creation of robot skin with sensory neurons, hair follicles, nails, and sweat glands is the ultimate goal. While it's unlikely that we'll soon find it difficult to distinguish between a robot and a person at the grocery store, Dr. Robinson concurred that the findings present some interesting possibilities. According to Dr. Robinson, using a skin-like covering for hardware components is a crucial step toward tighter human-robot collaboration. This is the first time that such material have been utilized on a functional robot, despite the fact that three-dimensional skin simulations have long been used for research and testing on cosmetics and medications. In this instance, keratinocytes and fibroblasts, two different types of biological skin cells are grown within a lightweight collagen network known as a hydrogel to create the synthetic skin. One of the more difficult components of this research was growing skin directly on the robotic component. This required specifically constructed structures that could adhere the collagen fibers to them. But it was worthwhile for the aforementioned advantages. Our creation can heal itself after being sliced or otherwise harmed in addition to being soft like genuine skin. Therefore, we anticipated it could be helpful in fields where in-situ repairability and human-like traits like dexterity and a gentle touch are valued. Takeuchi added, In the future, we'll create more sophisticated versions by simulating some skin organs, such as sensory cells, hair follicles, and sweat glands. We also want to try coating bigger structures. The primary long-term goal of this work is to provide new opportunities for advanced industrial sectors. Manipulators that resemble humans might make it possible to automate tasks that are currently only doable by highly qualified experts. Regenerative medicine, cosmetics, and other industries may also gain from this. This may lessen the expense, duration, and complexity of research in various fields, and may even eliminate the necessity for animal testing. However, more work has to be done. The authors admitted that the skin substitute falls short of the genuine thing and that the finger cannot endure prolonged exposure to dry air. The ersatz skin cannot genuinely be regarded as living without future improvements like blood vessels, nails, and sweat glands. Scaling up our existing strategy to cover broader structures would be a difficult next step after including skin-specific functionalities, according to Takeuchi. Even while the disconnected digit may be unnerving, researchers expect that it will eventually lead to more lifelike humanoids that will promote better interactions between people and robots. The technology is expected to be applied in fields like medicine and hospitality, where repairability and human-like characteristics are crucial. Within the field of regenerative medicine, the technology is anticipated to help with the growth of skin cosmetic products, chemical leather, and transplant materials. Here is the end of the video. What results might be possible on this technology? Let us know in the comments down below.